Hello all, I'm here with a new video for you today, and today, me and my lovely, lovely co-host here are asking one simple question. Canonical's Unity desktop, is it really as bad as we all remember? Let's find out. So here we are at the Ubuntu Unity desktop. Now I'm going to explain to you for a minute exactly what we're going to do to answer the question of how does Unity hold up? in the modern day, and is it as bad as we remember? What I have launched here in front of you is Ubuntu Unity Edition, or the Unity Flavor, as I like to call it, and the version is 24.04.1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to install this in a virtual machine, and we're going to test it out. So, we're going to start with install Ubuntu Unity. This is going to be a very, very similar installer to some of the other ones I've done on the channel, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. There, now we're at the, uh, the keyboard screen. This is also fairly typical. US default installer so far is quite friendly, and I like that it gives me the option for additional packages. We'll go with the normal installation, because normal kind of is what normally gives you the intended a uh, install by the developers and stuff like that. It's like the same way in video games, you know, like normal difficulty. That's the difficulty they generally intend the game to be played on. So we're going to go race disk. Oh, we'll leave everything else as default. All right, so we're going to go with... This is where we put in our username and all that fun stuff. It's not going to be around very long. So this gives us a nice little overview of everything. I like that. It, it magnifies the cursor for you. I quite like that, you know. Now we're going to hit install now, and we're going to let us do its thing, and once it's done, we're going to come back and we're going to really test out the desktop. And here we are. We are. There, and here we are. We are back at the Ubuntu Unity desktop, kind of. This is the login screen. Actually, a very nice looking login screen, if I, if I must admit. You know, you wouldn't think it by what I've said so far, but... When Unity first came out, I absolutely hated it. So let's try this again. And here we are at the proper desktop. Now, just a little exercise in how this is. Let's take a look at some of the settings here. Because obviously this display is not what we want, right? This is a very, very limited resolution for some reason. So let's put her up to 1080p. There we go, we're going to keep that configuration there. That looks a lot better now, doesn't it? This retains the odd quirk of Ubuntu having all of the uh, buttons on the left-hand side, which that wasn't just a Unity thing. They've been doing that since long before Unity, and it takes a little bit of getting used to. So now let's actually try using it. See on the bar sidebar here, we got our LibreOffice documents and our settings and the search, your computer. And here we can type in any application we want by the looks of it. So let's try to open up something simple like a web browser. So, okay, so this, hmm, so what is this? So this is an applications, this is files and folders, videos, music, photos. Okay, <clears throat> I have to admit that it has been a very, very long time since I used Unity, so I barely remember using it at all. I just really remember absolutely hating it when it first came out back in 2011. You know, I like the fact now it, it gives you search options right in the desktop for this. That's nice. Where it's not so nice is we get all of our applications in one, just in one screen here. Oh, well, you know, maybe I could get used to that, to be honest with you. So we're going to go open Firefox. It puts it on the side panel here. Huh. Well, let's see if it opens it up. I'm going to test something in one second here. So, Firefox opened up no problem. Still looking at the wrong thing. So, if I want to open up the web browser in Unity, it's one, two, three. Three clicks to open it up. That's actually not too bad. And it's now pinned on my recent application. So, so this is like basically like my, my task, almost functioning like my taskbar. Okay. So, Let's see what we've got for customization options for Unity. Device color profiles. Let's try this. Yes, I've got it up in the virtual box. Okay. Oh, settings. 
We get wallpapers. Lots of wallpapers to come with. We have Yarrow and Yarrow Dark as our default themes. Okay, we get some options here for behavior, like enabling workspaces, visual effects. We can auto hide the lamp to launcher. Unity tweak tool. All right, let's see if that comes pre-installed. Unity tweak tool, there we are. It does come pre-installed. Come with 4K backgrounds too, nice. Okay, this seems to give us quite a bit more. So let's go theme here, yarrow, yarrow, dark, radiance. The classic Ubuntu theme of ambience. That's the old school one. But we're going to go back to Yarrow Dark. Yarrow Dark is a very nice theme. I actually have to admit that in terms of aesthetics and color palette, I absolutely love the purple tones of the black. Big fan of that, actually. All right, let's go back to that Unity Tweak tool. Let's see what other options it gives us here. We can change our... We can add hot corners. I am going to add a hot corner, actually. I'm going to add a hot corner right here. And let's see what that one does. Okay, I obviously have to apply it first. So window snapping, corners, window snapping, additional. Hmm, there's quite a lot to go through here. I don't have the workspace. Let's turn the workspace switcher on, because I don't have it on by default. But when it comes on, okay, so overview. Now it hasn't saved any of my settings yet. So, does it save my settings? Where does it save them? Okay, it does not save them when I just exit. Hmm. Let's take a minute here. Let's see if I can find the settings in the Unity Tweak tool. Launch auto hide search. Yep. Yep. Okay. We got lots of really cool options in here, but it's not showing me where the option to save it is. So, hmm. You know what? Let's give that a quick Google because we can do that. I'm going to go Firefox again. One thing I do notice is that the launcher to this is very big. So let's see if that's so. Now you can set that to auto hide. I saw the setting there a second ago, but it doesn't do it automatically. So it does take up quite a bit of screen estate. But, you know, where it's on the side like that, that's not as bad. Because then again, I have all my desktop set up to do something very, very similar. So, all right. We're going to go apply settings, Unity Tweak Tool, because I've never really used the Unity Tweak Tool before. I imagine it's just the same as the Gnome Tweak Tool, but I haven't really used that one much either. It's not actually acting too slow on the VM this time, but that's because I've given this significantly more resources than my previous VM, so yeah, we got a... So I'm going to go back into the Unity Tweak Tool, I'm going to see if the settings that I put in there a second ago, if they actually applied. So let's go... Settings. Yeah, no, they applied. Super ass. Okay. Nope. Super key ass did not start the uh, switcher. So, hmm. So, sadly, it looks like the Unity Tweak tool does not work out of the box. And I cannot easily see here how to actually make it work. That kind of really sucks. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other things here, because... Okay, so if I, I, it hides the X button, but also stretches it across the top. Okay, Unity. Hmm. No, no, switch. Okay, so... Yeah. So that switcher that is said right there, that's just the... Uh, your standard Alt-Tab. I have to admit that in terms of aesthetics, I really like it, but I'm really disappointed that the... Unity Tweak Tool doesn't really seem to work out of the box. It seems to be saving my settings, but not actually doing anything. Like, for example, if I go into Workspace Settings, yeah, it saves where I turned it on. It saves where my hot corner was, but doesn't actually apply it, which really kind of... That kind of sucks. The panel up here, this looks pretty standard. It is kind of nice that it runs across the top. I actually kind of like that. That's this little icon here. Okay, so let's see if we switch the accent color, what that does. That doesn't seem to do anything either. Prussian green, that should definitely make it look a lot different than it does. Instead, we're stuck on the purple. Which, I'm going to be honest, I really like the purple. But it kind of sucks that the option's kind of dead. Unless it's going to apply it in like 10 seconds from now, and that's why it's lagging. You know, 
Conceptually, I have to admit, I like this a lot more than I used to. But it seems like there's just a lot of things that are just kind of not working now. And I think that really kind of comes from the fact that it's been basically abandoned. And it seems like it just needs a lot of work. Which is a sh kind of a shame because now, even though everyone... For those of you who were not around back in the day... Okay. Like, this was back when I first started. So... All right, you know what? <clears throat> Story time for all y'all. My first Linux distro was Ubuntu 10.04, okay? That was the first distro I ever installed, and I installed it through Wubby, and I absolutely loved it. And I've spent like 10 years trying to make every, I've spent the, all the years since trying to make every Linux distro I use look like it. I kind of wish I was joking, but I'm really not. I was absolutely enamored with the look and feel of it. And I was using Ubuntu for about a year. And then Unity came out with the 11.04 release. And when Unity came out, I absolutely hated it. I hated all the changes to it and all of that. And I was one of the people that was in that big Unity thread back in the day, complaining about how horrible it was. And I, that was about the time that I jumped ship to Linux Mint, which I used Linux Mint pretty much ever since. To varying degrees. I'm not using it right now, but because lately I have switched to Arch. But anyway, point is, is that I was one of like the original haters of Unity. But now, now that I'm looking back on it and using it here, I can actually really see what they were going for, and I kind of like it. It's really, really radically different than Windows, and really, really radically different than what I'm used to. But I can really kind of see what they're going for. And it was not a terrible idea. Like, I really kind of like how it makes everything only a few clicks away. It has a, a way of being putting the settings all right in front of you, which I actually quite like. So, more story time for you. For those of you who don't know what the story about Unity was, what Unity was, it's a fork of Gnome Shell that Canonical was developing with the specific intention of creating a unified desktop across tablets, computers, and phones. And this was their, Unity was their attempt to implement that, and that's why it's called Unity, the idea of creating a united desktop. And while I have to admit that, I actually kind of think that's not a very good idea. It is kind of to be expected that people are gonna play with these kinds of ideas when technology is still quite new, like smartphones were, and, 2011, and tablets were in 2011. It was really tablets that drove this. But I have to admit, of all the attempts to kind of implement that idea, or go for that idea, Unity seemed like it was actually the best one, because I'm going to be honest with you, messing around with it here, it's actually very usable. There doesn't, like, none of the configuration options seem to really work, which kind of really sucks, but... That doesn't really, you know, that's more about the distro than the desktop. And what I really want to look at here today was the desktop. And so, this is the general state of Unity in 2024. Pretty much completely abandoned. It looks a lot better than we all thought it, than I remember it being. And it's a lot easier to use than I remember it being. But it looks like, yeah, Ubuntu abandoned it back in 2017. And... This is kind of like one of its one of those uh, community dis community driven official flavors of Ubuntu, like Kubuntu or Lubuntu. But it really kind of seems like this has been sort of abandoned, even though it's a new version. Because there's things about it that should work out of the box and just don't. So, all right. Now, before I go, there's two other little things I wanted to show you guys here. First is the system monitor app called Stacer, which you can find right here under Applications. See, Applications, Stacer. It's all nicely in alphabetical order by default. So again, that looks quite good. So I click Stacer, and now I've got two running. So I'm gonna exit one out. That's how you launch it. And you can see that Unity is actually, Ubuntu Unity is actually pretty decent in resource usage. We do have 1.2 gigabytes of RAM usage right now, but that's because of the other thing I want to show you guys. We also have the updates running in the background as well. Now, I will post a comment below and let you guys know if the updates 
fix the issues with the uh, Unity Tweak tool that we were having a minute ago. I kind of don't think it will. So, to summarize my thoughts and conclusion about Unity, do I... I don't really... I still don't really kind of like the concept of what they were going for with a unified desktop between all devices because that's just not a very good idea. But honestly, using it now, I find it is much more user-friendly and much more aesthetically pleasing than I remember. So I kind of wonder if the community kind of kind of hated on it too much back in the day. Because it seems like that once it came to maturity, it was actually much better. And it could be made into a very nice modern desktop if somebody was willing to put the work into it. Because as of right now, it's only GTK3, not GTK4. And yeah, it would take a lot of modernization, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is much better than what I remember. So don't forget to like and subscribe and pray every day.